Do I like it like this or do I like it like this? I sit down here. Oh my god. I'm on my knees. This is not gonna be an easy one. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome here. If you're new here, my name's Bethany. I'm the girl behind Well Love Knits. If you didn't know, I am a knitter, of course, but I'm also a mom, a first time mom. And last year while I was pregnant, I spent the majority of my knitting time stitching up things for my son's handmade wardrobe. And that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but you know, things just flew off the needles. I think I made around nine pieces for him before he was born. And as he's now gotten older and he's turning six months tomorrow. You're turning six months tomorrow. Can you believe that? Uh, I just can't believe that. But I've been able to put him in the majority of the things that I've made for him. And as I've been doing so over the last couple of months, taking mental notes, thinking about what would I do differently? What worked, what didn't? And I thought it would be nice to create a video summing up, you know, the things that you should consider before casting on those baby knits. And it's actually a question that I get a lot. So hopefully this video isn't as niche as I originally thought it was because I posted a question box over on Instagram and asked you guys what you would wanna know. And there was a lot of questions. So hopefully I will be able to address those here as well. I am a first time mom though. So do take some of the things that I'm saying with a grain of salt. If you are a parent knitting for your baby, go with your gut. You will know what you love and what you will not like uh, in a baby garment. I was getting a lot of comments saying, oh, you're gonna hate this. Oh, you're gonna love having this. And they weren't always true. So just remember that. Okay, so these are the things that you need to consider before casting on for a baby. What is the best size to knit? That's the number one question. Babies are only so small for such a short period of time and they grow at an incredibly fast rate. So is it even worth knitting for a baby at all? And if you're asking me as a knitting mom, absolutely, 100%. It's fantastic. Baby knits are so small, quick and cute and fun to make. Uh, there's really no reason why you shouldn't. I mean, at least cast on one and try one out. I mean, what do you really have to lose? Will the finished piece get a lot of use? Yes and no. It's hit or miss. It kind of just depends what the garment's really for. Um, especially for those really small sizes, they will get in and out of those so fast. It definitely depends on the baby. Arthur leaned a little, or is leaning a little more on the larger side. So he's six months old tomorrow and he's fitting into nine month old body suits, which is just, but I've taken those milestone pictures for Arthur and every month of his life so far, he has been in knitwear. So I have those pictures and I have those memories of him being in all of those knitted pieces. So that to me has made it 100% worth it. It is worth it, yes, but what size? Honestly, I say that newborns are actually easier to dress up in. And that was another thing that people kept telling me, oh, don't knit the smaller sizes. They're gonna grow out of those so fast. Well, I have a six month old wiggly baby who hates, hates having anything over his head. So it was so much easier a couple of months ago to actually put him in things. And so the things that I made for him at this stage of his life, I don't feel like get as much wear as the one month, two month, three month sweaters. So go ahead and knit those small sizes. Honestly, I think you won't regret that. Uh, and anyway, you'll just have a really small keepsake that you can keep if you're into that sort of thing for like memory boxes and stuff. Uh, you might not be lucky like I was. Um, Arthur didn't really have any blowouts in his smaller items. Actually, none of his knits. He hasn't had blowouts at all, but uh, that's just, you know, sheer luck. Even if this is a gift, I think it would even just be a nice keepsake for the parents to look back on and remember just how small that their baby was. Because I have my seaside sweater, the one month old size, and I look at that and I can't imagine him being that small. It kind of blows my mind how much he has grown already. And I like looking back on it. Yeah, it's just like a memory of those times. So I think it's worthwhile even as a gift, um, definitely as a knitting parent, I think you would absolutely love it. And then, you know, as a gift, it would also just be really sweet. A sweet keepsake. Babies come in all range of sizes. So do keep that in mind when you're picking out what size to actually knit. And I think it's the same for adults, adult patterns. Not all patterns are going to be alike in terms of sizing. It's like that shopping for baby clothes, like at the store. 
no size is the same from store to store. So it's kind of the same thing with patterns as well. What I would say is just knit one size up for whatever age you want the baby to be wearing the piece, if that makes sense. So for example, if you want the baby to fit into it when he or she is three months, I would knit the four month to five month size. That way the baby has a little bit of extra room to wiggle around in and um, you won't miss that window, you know? Like what if you wake up and remember, oh, I have a sweater for my four month old baby. It's the four month size but as a four month old, he's much larger than whatever the size is, you see? And then, you know, you put them in too late. So what garments are the best to use? Well, I would say in my experience that sweaters and pants would be the most worthwhile. Uh, I knit a couple of those baby body suits. Skip that. I wouldn't waste your time. Honestly, I didn't really grab for those as much as I thought I would, um, mainly because of the fiber that I chose to knit them with, but I'll get into that in a second. Skip sweaters that do not have button openings, like the pull over your head, unless you plan on knitting those in a larger size. I really love the look of those sweaters. Like the Friday sweater, for example, was a sweater that I really got a lot of wear out of, but that was because I put him in it before the size that was recommended. So I knit it for like a four month old, I think, and I put him in it at two months and I got a lot of use out of it then. But by the time four months rolled around, I felt a little nervous about the opening for his head. And that will kind of vary from knitter to knitter. So if you knit tightly, the, that opening probably will not fit over the baby's head. <laughs> um, so I just think it's safe. It's just a safe option to knit a larger size. In that case, if you're going, if you're going for that type of garment, otherwise I would really recommend like the seaside sweater, for example, they have the buttons that way you can just undo buttons as you feel, um, comfortable or uncomfortable, depending on what you want to do. So let's talk about fiber content to use. So I would normally say that if you are the parent knitting up something, whatever you want, if you're a knitter, you're going to be a little bit more into maintaining the garment, taking care of it, whatever that entails. Um, if you want to make things easy on yourself, go for the fibers that are branded for babies. I found that the majority of these are either like a wool cotton blend, some acrylic. Um, I've seen alpaca mixed in there sometimes and even cashmere for like the really fancy kind. I only knit with one branded baby yarn and that was Baby Cash Soft Merino by Rowan Yarn. I really love that fiber, it was really nice. The majority of the things that I made were in Knitting for Olive Merino and that was mainly because I just really loved the color palette and the range of options that they had. It really worked well for my personal style and it is a non super wash wool and I just knew that I really didn't care. <laughs> I was more into the aesthetic side I think than I was about yeah, the maintenance. That really didn't bother me. I didn't mind the idea of taking that little sweater and throwing it into the sink and washing it on its own. Um, you know, it, it really didn't bother me. I didn't need something that was gonna easily go into the washing machine. I did knit with both superwash and non-superwash wool. I will say that I just preferred the knitting experience of non-superwash wool over superwash, mainly because every time that I knit with superwash wool, it just does not, the, the end piece after blocking just does not turn out the way that I thought it would. I just don't have really good luck working with that fiber type of fiber. So I just stick with non superwash because I know it's predictable for me. Here's what I regret. I actually regret knitting in 100% wool. Um, and it's not because of the maintenance side of things. It's actually because I was ultimately a little too nervous to put Arthur in some of the clothes because it was 100% wool. It was extremely warm. As a first time mom, something that I didn't actually know is that babies, their body temperature is a little bit higher than our base body temperature. Um, so it's actually a little bit more common for them to overheat than for them to be too cold. So that's actually something you have to look out for. And so for those body suits, like I mentioned, um, those things, I didn't really wanna put Arthur in them because I was worried he was gonna get overheated. If I could do it over again, I would probably lean more towards wool cotton blends for most of my projects instead of the 100% wool projects, at least for things that I envisioned him to be wearing inside the house. For outerwear, 100% wool, I think, is still what my go-to would be. Oh, we have little Arthur here with us now. 
He was playing on the sidelines, but now he wants to be in the shot. So he's gonna sit on my lap for a little bit. So most baby knits are ranging from fingering weight to DK weight projects. Uh, I think the majority of the needle sizes that I used were anywhere between 2.5 to four and a half, but I was mainly working with three millimeter needles, if I remember correctly. So definitely make sure that you have those. Um, and I would definitely recommend that you get familiar. I would definitely recommend that you get familiar with double pointed needles because babies have very tiny arms, very tiny legs. And if you're knitting sweaters or pants, um, yeah, you're gonna need to knit in a very small circumference. You can of course use magic loop, but DPNs I feel like have a better fabric or they provide a better, better fabric with less um, gaps in between. I, you just gotta get familiar with it. And then I feel like it's much easier than Magic Loop in some cases for something so small. So I would definitely recommend investing in a set potentially, if you know you're gonna be knitting a lot. Buttons or snaps, I honestly say just go for whatever you like. That was another thing I got a lot of unsolicited advice on uh, that I would hate doing them up, which just wasn't true. Uh, I think buttons are very cute. The one thing that I would keep in mind though is that it's a choking hazard. So always inspect the garment before you're putting it on your baby, um, just because you wanna make sure that those are very nice and secure so that it doesn't come undone while they're playing and then they swallow it by accident. So definitely keep an eye out for that. That's just another um, maintenance thing to keep in mind. Finally, who are you knitting for? Are you knitting for yourself? Are you knitting for a friend? Are you knitting for first time parents? These are important questions too. If it's for you, trust your gut. That's what I'm gonna say. You know what you wanna create and you also know what you can handle as it's really not much different than taking care of your own hand knitted sweaters. It's just much smaller. So uh, you know that you'll probably have a little bit more patience than most in terms of washing and taking care of drying uh, handmade knits. <laughs> Sucking on my thumb. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'd say trust your gut there. If you're knitting for a friend that has a lot of children, I would say go for super wash wool, anything that could be thrown into the dryer or the washing machine. Um, I think they'll appreciate that because they just probably won't have as much time as other, <laughs> as first time parents, for example. And for first time parents, I would just say maybe lean into those larger sizes. You don't have to knit like up to a year, a year plus. You can definitely do those smaller sizes. They would definitely appreciate those. I would just say knit maybe one or two months um, older than what you intend the baby to wear. Like I was saying earlier. And the reason for that is just remembering back to when he was a month old, two months. I don't think it was until he was three months old that I got the full confidence of dressing him um, as quickly and I, I'm just not as cautious as I used to be. I think I was overly cautious dressing him up when he was really young. I looked at him very much like, this is a very fragile little being. And I don't look at him like that anymore. <laughs> Babies are resilient, they are just fine. But as first time parents, I think um, we're just not used to whipping our baby around, you know? <laughs> uh, we don't have that confidence yet. So give them a little bit of extra time to wear the baby knits uh, by knitting sizes up. Okay, little wiggle dude. And there you have it. Those are my recommendations for knitting for babies. I don't think that this was a definitive list by any means, but these are definitely some of the top things that you should consider. Um, most of the time, just go with your gut. Uh, and I think, you'll be just fine. So if you are knitting for yourself for a future baby in your life, congratulations. I'm so excited for you. And I'm also just really happy if you're not knitting for yourself, if you're knitting for others, I think that's an, a really, it's, I think that's an amazing thing, uh, knitting for first time parents. It's a really sweet and thoughtful gesture. So they're very lucky to have you a maker in their life. Um, I don't really know what he's trying to do. So I'm going to leave you guys here and hang out with my son for a little bit. And okay, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if you liked this, definitely give it a like. That really, really helps me out. And maybe subscribe if you wanna stick around. I would really love to have you guys here and I will see you in the next one.